Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to use the Project Thorough Modding SDK. In this example, we are going to look into how to access certain components in the game or access certain method methods and calls so you could influence the gameplay. Okay, in this example, we're going to look at a very simple mechanic, which is a kill trigger. This is basically just a box with a box collider that is set to is trigger. And what we want to achieve is as soon as the player touches this spear or an NPC, it immediately dies. That's what we want to achieve. And this is how I did it. So first of all, I created the scene to set it all up. Um, this is called main, of course, because that's how the game knows how to get the map. It's a scene, so we have to put it in mods later, uh, in map mods later in the folder. Um, I created this folder called interface. That's my modding source. That's the script, kill on trigger. That's the only script here. And it is attached to this object right here, this cube. Okay, then we have a material, which is this red hollow material that is of course also included in this interface. And that's it basically. Let's look into the code and how we achieve the effect of immediately dying once we touch the trigger. So we call the method on trigger enter, or we uh, populate uh, the input of this method. And this is a unity method. And we have an input, which is other. This is a collider that it has been hit into the uh, trigger. And what we do is we are trying to get a component or an interface called iGameplay um, somewhere in the parents of the collider that has hit the sphere. So once an object hits it, we're searching through the hierarchy upwards and we search for, let's close this really quick to make it a little bit easier. Okay, um, and we search for the interface. And once we have the interface in some object up the hierarchy in the collider that has hit the sphere uh, or the trigger uh, box, then we check if the gameplay has been, um, is unequal to null, so if it actually found gameplay, because that's a, a possibility as well. And then we call the on explosion impact. So it could be anything else really. So let's look at what options we have. We have on explosion impact, we have on bullet impact, on knife impact, on punch impact, on taser impact. So all kinds of things happening that we can uh, call. And I just call the on explosion impact because it's the simplest to implement. You just need to pass in a direction for the explosion and an impulse. So it doesn't really do anything. So that's why we can just put anything in there. But the impulse is important because the impulse gets subtracted from the health of the player or the health of the NPC. <clears throat> so um, that's how you can actually interface with the health of the player. Um, I know there should probably be a set health or add health function as well. But uh, yeah, that's the only way we, you can do it right now. Yeah, and that's basically it. You just look for the interface in a parent, comp in a parent object of the object that has been hit into the trigger. And then you call this method. And then you should be able to <clears throat> kill the player or kill the NPC on touch of this sphere. Okay, so let's go into import settings ex for export settings. Um, yeah, it's already set up. You go directly into the mods and maps of the persistent data path. I hit build mod. Save the changes of the scene that I made. <clears throat> okay. Now let me change the screen. That's wrong. That's right. So you can see what I'm seeing when I'm in the game. Stop. Name and reason, please. Perfect. Here we go. I go into maps all the way down to mods. And here is the interfacing P3E. This is what I'm going to select. And now we are in the scene that we just created in the modding SDK. And now I'm going to spawn a few NPCs. And I'm going to push them into the kill sphere or kill trigger. Let's keep it respectful. Yeah, and as you can see, she instantly dies once she enters the sphere. And 
are playing nice. The same is going to happen to me once I enter the sphere. Yeah, I'm immediately dead once I touch the sphere. Let's try to trick Mila into going into the sphere. Yeah, perfect, it works. It works a little bit too well, I guess. Okay, let me change the screens one more time. Oops, that was wrong. All right. Um, and there's one more thing that I want to show you, and this is how to interface the vehicle stuff. Um, for this, I already made an example, which is in the project that I made modding SDK folder. It's in examples under vehicles. And this is just a prepack, a spawnable. <clears throat> okay, let's look into it. You basically have a whole vehicle set up here with motor sounds and vehicles, but that's not the important part. What I want to show you is how to get the vehicle inputs. So as you may know, Project Third Eye has a, um, a way to implement the uh, vehicle inputs. So once the tr seat is taken, you can use the right trigger to throttle and the left trigger to brake or to reverse the vehicle. And uh, yeah, this is inside the game logic, but you can get the vehicle inputs very easily. So the vehicle has to have a U vehicle input script. That's basically the script that is doing all the logic internally inside of the game. So you have a steering multiplier and a use trigger at throttle property. But yeah, mostly that's what you want for most of the time. And I make the steering. Okay, and this is a U steering sensor. You select the steering, which is this transform right here. So it's just this transform. Um, and that's where it gets its values from. The steering sensor should be in a parent object that has the exact same orientation as the steering, so that the steering object itself is at position 000 and rotation 000 and the yeah the orientation of this object should be forward the forward axis should be the uh, the axle or the the rotating axis and the up axis should be up so that's how you know how your steering works and then of course the this child object should be at orientation 0 to make it work properly Okay, that's how you set up the steering in the code. And of course you need a hinge joint and a U interactable component and all these things to make it interactable properly. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to look at how to get the inputs from the steering and the trigger. And the U steering sensor automatically internally communicates with the U vehicle input. So it gets it from its parent so this object has to be a child of this object, and that's how they communicate. But now inside of the car script, which is also included in the example, I'm going to show you how to interface the <coughs> values from, from the, uh, from the U vehicle inter input with the interface. So for this, we have this interface right here. It's called I vehicle input. That's how you get your values. We call this instance uh, input, and then we populate it at start. And what we do is we're going to just get the I vehicle input. We just can grab the interface, and the interface is located inside of this script, the U vehicle input. The U vehicle input has an instance or is um, subscribed or whatever you call it, or implements the interface called I vehicle input <clears throat> and that's how you can get the vehicle input and then what you need to do is once it's populated and we checked if it's uh, actually populated we can go and say input dot get input so we call this method here and this returns a completely populated input uh, struct that has pitch, roll, throttle, brakes, and of course steering. And that's what I did for the vehicle as well, for this uh, car. And you can see this right here. We have the motor input is input 
dot get component throttle minus input dot get component brakes and just a little bit so you can reverse the vehicle because the brakes is the left trigger and the throttle is the right trigger and the steering is just get component dot steering that's steering input for my vehicle that I made and this is populated by the U steering sensor that communicates to this U vehicle input thing and then you can grab it with the interface. That's basically how it works. And then you can do all kinds of stuff like I did in this example for the car that has yeah, the wheels um, physically turned and then we have the wheel sound, and the motor sound, and all these things. You can all look it up yourself in the example for the car that I made. Yeah, and it's in the project that I'm modding SDK and examples on the vehicles. That's how you can get the instance. And that's it for now. And follow the development of Project Third Eye.